Hello YouTube, Joey here from Team Burning Infinity with an updated Cotton World deck. Um, Skull Warriors still aren't done post BTO3, but there's a couple things I'm testing, and honestly I'm really liking the way the deck's going and all, so yeah. Uh, let's jump straight into it. Oh wait, actually I shouldn't reveal that yet. Uh, this is going to be main deck and sideboard with tons of explanations, because I changed the deck around a lot and a little in the same way, so yeah. Let's start. Uh, Flag and Bite are always the same. Captain World, and my buddy for me is Blood Knife Kemen Sai. So, yeah, he's a 4 2 1. He has Penetrate, he's a size 1, and he has no call cost, but at the end of the turn he's played, he dies. So, one of the cards he combos really well with is Undefeatable Setsujishi. Um, this is a really sweet size 1 that I've only been able to get one of because that's the only one that's been pulled at my locals. It's a double wearing BTO 3 Drums Adventures. And it is 4,000 power, 2 critical, 1,000 defense, can't be called to the center. And at the end of the turn, if I can put any number of Skull Warriors on the field into the gauge with his ability, including himself. So he's really sweet for that, maintaining good gauge while using lethal formations, etc. And all my gauge heavy cards, so he helps a lot with the deck. Um, he's also recyclable by a return and good target for Haze Ball, so overall I really like it and I need more. Um, as I said, the only reason he's at 1 is because I only have 1, I would be playing him at 3. Um, I play 2 C's playing Eric Amaros because it's an extra size 1 that can defend the center, besides Yamagitsune, and it's a 3 two, 1 vanilla. That's good for Into Darkness and Setsujichi's effect. So that's why that's there. Um, 2 Aftermath Kagakus. Any more than 2 is just cluttering because it's a 7-2-2 two, two meant to kill things. And this is one of the main cards that combos really well with Setsujichi as... He's not meant to deal damage, he's supposed to kill with his 7,000 power, and with that, you can easily send him to the gauge without having to worry about wasting cards. Um, combos really well in the deck regardless, because it's still a 2 crit vanilla. If you don't have the um, monster, if you don't have anything to kill, you can just play it and go for 2 darkness, push for gains. I've done that plenty of times, but both uses are very, used, are very nice if you use them correctly during the timing, so yeah. Um, next up is 4 of Evelyn Heart Yamagitsune. This guy's the heart of the deck. Um, can't play Skull Warriors properly without him. He is a 5-2-1. Uh, um, I don't know why I said 4. And he has the ability to darkness after his call cost to pay 1 gauge. Uh, whenever a Skull Warrior deals damage, including himself or Link attacks, I can send that monster or monsters to the drop zone and draw a card for each target sent. So the best card that works with this is the upcoming one, which was my buddy, the 4 2 with Penetrate, because I could kill their center and deal damage and then send it to the drop and draw a card. So overall, this combos really well with the monsters that would kill themselves because you get to draw off of them instead, and they don't become dead cards. Um, so that's it for the size ones. It's pretty neat. The deck's been working out really well. I got top four today at Locals. I just decided to get some set two packs, so I was like, whatever, maybe I'll pull an SP or something interesting. Um, I just pulled a great two gas drop, but that's besides the point. Uh, deck works really well. Sets of GC was a big help to the deck, so yeah. Also, tell me what you guys think about the other mat. Um, if you guys prefer the T mat, I'll put that here. If you guys want this mat, I'll just leave that here. And if any of you guys just, eh, you know what? You subscribe. If any of you guys want to see what the T mat looks like, just look at some of my older videos. You'll see it. Um, this is the Drums Adventures mat. Um, picked it up today, so yeah. Then I have two Flash Drake in my heavies. Uh, he's a really good card. I was playing three today during locals, but I needed to fit space in for other cards. So, um, plus at three kind of clogs a bit, but he's a 5-2-1. He kills himself at the end of the turn, and he has the abil ability Poisonous Strike, which is whenever he would enter the field, I destroy a size one or less monster. So, very nice. And gets rid of things like Bronze Shield Dragon or whatever if I really need to, or even just a random wall in the center that I could... Use Yamagi I could have used Yamagi's name wasting an attack on, but he takes care of that. So very good, and it's also really good against Dungeon World because it gets around the ability of Nazara Hot Springs and stuff like that. Um, then, I have four copies of Tempest Gar. I decided to bump him up to four because he's been really good as of late, and I definitely need to see him more, so that's my reason for bumping up to four. Really sweet card, 325, ability, Garo Slash, Pig H, gains 3,000 and double attack, but at the end of the turn, he dies. Definitely wanted to see him more, so that's why I picked him up to 4 instead of 3. Also, it couldn't hurt. 
Um, and then the new card. Well, not new for time-wise, but deck-wise. Uh, two Evil Sins. I have no clue how to say that last name. It's a size 3, 737. Call cost a pay 3 gauge. And when this card would enter the field, you can choose one demon way from your drop zone, which is a decent portion of my spells, I have to say. Add it to the hand. And then you can choose up to three monsters in your opponent's drop in return to the deck. You do have to return at least one, though. But they go to the bottom of, de of the deck in any order you choose, which is really sweet. 737 is good stats, and he becomes a wall and beater. So, really useful. Um, you can also hinder their plays. Like, I did this dungeon roll. I got rid of, like, dungeon enemy and adventures just to prevent Nazar Hot Springs. Continue stuff like that from going off. So, overall, really powerful card. Um... Next up is two clear serenity. These are really placeholders because I don't proxy. Um, these are placeholders for the missing undefeatables. Plus, this card works really well with uh, lethal formation and whatnot, so it's not terrible to have. It has its place still, but I mean, undefeatable just completely replaces it overall. Uh, gain three gauge. It can only be used once per turn. It's your gauge gaining card. Um, four copies of Return of the Underworld. Having this card multiples on the field is so powerful. You really get used to it and really like it. Um, Honestly, this is one of the cards you want to draw turn one. Because you can abuse your late game with this really easily, especially if you get multiples. Uh, it's a set spell. You can only use one of each one's ability per turn. It's pay one gauge and call size one or less skull wear from your drop zone without paying its call cost. So really sweet. Because you get cards like Yamagitsune back for one gauge from the drop. So it's basically a free call from the drop. And if it's one of these free monsters, then it's one gauge for the drop. But really powerful set spell and really puts pressure on your opponents as they can't deal with your size ones unless they want to remove that. And that takes a lot of gauge or whatever. Next up is four of my favorite spell in the deck next to Gepikigiri. Ninja Art Snake Gaze. Uh, cast cost, pay one life and rest your opponent's monsters. So this works really well because it... Stops your three your opponent's three critters before the battle even begins. It works really well against Dungeon World because a lot of the Dungeon World monsters are link attack based, aka adventurers, and also it stops double and triple attackers instantly in their tracks like Armor Knight, Demon, and whatnot. So really good. And you could just use that in another nullifier if need be. Um and then the nullifier art of body replacement. Nullify any non link attack. So gotta play those. Uh, Omno Genbu does not need to be in the deck because Snake Gaze, it helps a lot more. Um, worlds like Cotton World and Danger World, which I do play, um, I like them because they're a lot more skill based than just having the power cards and having the super combos and all that. So yeah, I like these decks that are a lot more skill based and harder to play, which is why I play them. Um, definitely really interesting though. Snake Gaze, Ober Genbu is definitely really good if you're like new to Cats in a World and don't know how to play it or anything like that. But Snake Gaze, when you're a veteran or more experienced player with the deck, it definitely helps a lot more than Ober Genbu does. Uh, next up is Demon Way Gepikiri. It, this is a 4 of, it doesn't even need to be explained really. This is the best spell in the, in the world in my opinion because... When a monster on your side of the field would be destroyed, you counter and destroy one of theirs. So, it's free one for one, and sometimes you get rid of their high gauge cost monsters for basically almost nothing. So, really sweet, because like, let's say I'm playing against Ancient World, they play Tempest on me somehow, I can literally just get Gary for game. <laughs> It's really broken, in my opinion. That's such a useful card, and everyone hates it who plays against it. And then the other card they hate, its best friend, Art of Explosive Hades Fall. Play four copies of this. Um, bump this up four too, because I really like this card. And I like seeing it a lot, so I want to get this out as fast as possible as well, because this helps set up your drop zone. It's cast cost, pay one gauge. Put a monster from your deck into the soul of this card, and when your opponent would play a monster of the same size as a card in this card's soul, you would deal two damage to them, destroy their monster, and send them and destroy this card as well as the card in the soul. So that really helps set up your drop zone. Then two of the weapon, which I really use for either end gaming or pushing, uh, five heavenly so only mar. I really like this weapon still. Um, pay one gauge. It's put the top two cards of your deck into this card's soul, and 
at the end of its turn, if this card would be in a rest position, you would take one of the soul from this card and put it into the drop zone, or else you would destroy this card. Uh, it's a 6,000 power 3 crit weapon, so it's still really good, and it combos really well with the Amigizune combo, where you have whatever monster in the middle to darkness it, draw your card, and then swing for 3. Usually I'll use that combo if I'm going to finish a game up with it, and I know I can. Um, next up is the impacts. 3, Secret Sword Lethal Formation. Uh, lethal Formation is really good. I play 3 just for consistency because you really want to get this out in early to mid game. Uh, late game is pretty useless in my opinion. It doesn't do as much as it would early game or mid game. Um, this really push into the late game to finish your opponent and screw up their main play. Uh, the two Secret Swords I play are Star Crusher and Shooting Star. You only need one of each. No reality, you only need to activate one per game. You don't even need to finish them with this. This like stop their main play and then push really hard for game. And that's how I use it in this deck. But uh, Star Crusher is really good in the sense that you nullify a spell and then deal three free damage. And this destroys an item that can be a real pain, deal three damage. So that's why I like those a lot. These I actually like Shooting Star a lot more than Star Crusher, but Star Crusher is definitely the better one. So you put sh you only put Shooting Star if you know your opponent's gonna push at you for an I oh, an item. And I've started playing it in more, so my locals members obviously know when I play which one. So it's harder for it's harder for me to use it on them. But that's fine because it gives me practice and all that. So let's get onto the sideboard because that's my 50 card main deck, and it's been testing really well. Um, sideboard, which I haven't tested, but I know everything is for what matchup, and I tested it a little, and it worked. But uh, the first one, uh, two more flash striking my heavies. This is for Dungeon World and Size 1 Rush decks because you can really get rid of their turn, push hard, uh, get free draws, gauge, whatever. Just deal a lot of damage to them by avoiding their uh, destruction based cards through battle. Like this would just pop it by a card effect, um, such as Nazar Hot Springs. I keep mentioning that card because that's a card that's a real pain in the ass to deal with. And this card just completely sidesteps it when they have a size 1 in the center. So 5 to 1, I already explained this card. Um, 2 Art of Item Blasting, it's a counter spell, cast cost, pay 2 gauge, destroy an item on the field. Basically, you use this to deal with your opponent's item when they're attacking you, and then you push really hard next turn, punishing them for attacking you, and leaving an open center. Uh, 3 Demon Wish and Rekka, um, this card I'm still in the testing phase with. I still have a lot of decisions to deal with this. I don't know if I want it in yet. But it definitely isn't bad due to the new uh, Dungeon World being so weak and all. Uh, it's Dragon Energy for the deck, so I just have to test for that. And 3 Ninja Arts Half Kill. This card's amazing. Uh, anytime your mo opponent's monster with Soul Guard would attack, uh, you can nullify it and take all their soul out. So the reason I like this is because you can stop Link Attacks and all with it. Or if you're playing Ancient World, just completely wipe the Catastrophe that's annoying to deal with. So that's my sideboard, and those are my reasons for everything in there. Um, hopefully you guys really enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out our other videos. And if you guys want to see my Armor Knight deck profile, get this video to 15 likes. Also, tell me what you guys thought about the new drum mat I got. Um, really like it myself, so hopefully you guys like it as well. Thanks for watching. Enjoy from Team Burning Infinity. Signing out. Peace.